Good morning, everybody in Blaine Fleece and Fiber Land. I want to welcome you. Uh, if you have not watched any of these vlog or vlog episodes before, um, thank you for checking out this one. Um, I realized that in trying to do this vlog, uh, you know, on a regular schedule, that life was just going to throw in certain things and would make it very difficult for me to do it on a regular basis, much like blogging. So it's all good. Um, I also realized that I can't uh, wait for my videographer, my darling Elise, to be able to do the actual videoing. So chances are most of these episodes are going to be uh, me filming and you're going to hear my voice and you're not going to see me, which is not a bad thing. Because <laughs> that way I don't have to brush my hair in the morning, you guys. Seriously, I rolled out of bed, I put on my clothes, and I ran out and started seeing what was going on. So, um, I, I apologize. I think this is episode three. Um, I will be sure and put the correct title, you know, of it in the title, but... This is the Welcome to the Flock, Galadriel and Arwen episode. <laughs> so, for those of you who don't know, I got a call from the Washington State University Vet School. They have a wonderful teaching hospital there. And uh, Dr. Bradley said, you know, we've got these two sheep, or actually our, our office manager has these two sheep. It's okay. It's okay, Arwen. It's all right, sweet girl. I know you want to be with your... I know. It's all right. Okay. Uh, basically, this sweet gal uh, takes home the animals that need homes from the hospital. Uh, you know, an owner will decide they don't want the animal anymore, or it was an animal that was, you know, used for a breeding program at the school. And when they're done with that, they need a home. So this wonderful gal, Terry, who lives just right over the ridge from us, like three minutes from us, she's the one who's taken a bunch of animals home with her. Um, and she's got lots of acreage and animals. She's got a big soft heart too. Well, it's been a, she's just, I think she's just kind of had too many, too many smaller animals. She had, or has an alpaca and a goat and two Shetland sheep. And then she's got her horses and cows and uh, just ran out of grazing room uh, for these girls who I'm focused on right now. So I got a call from WSU asking if I would be interested in these Suffolk sheep. And I, I said yes, because <laughs> I can't seem to say no. And it all went so well getting Sam, you know, into the flock. That was like the easiest transition that we've had with introducing new members so you know I was feeling all confident yeah we can do this no problem huh yes yeah, because you're a good boy you are you're such a good boy so the big day rolled around yesterday and we Elise and I went and got the suffix and we took him out to Lee's who vaccinated him for us and warmed him and just made sure they're all ready to go home to the fellowship there's Cupcake. <laughs> See, Cupcake, if you would hold down the branches for the little sheep, they would really be your best friends. Okay. We got home, and we decided to keep the two Suffix, who have now disappeared. They're on the other side of that green truck. Decided to introduce them this morning. We locked everybody up last night. Um... But I could tell already that there was going to be fighting today because Arwen, who is the littler of the two and who looks almost exactly like Cupcake, she was wanting to fight through the fence and she and Black Velvet were really going at it just through the fence. So Galadriel and Arwen got locked in the barn last night. Why are you yelling? You're not stuck, are you? Oh, goodness. Here's Radagast in the tree. So everybody, you know, had a peaceful night. Well, this morning I get up, 
to do the whole sweet feed thing. My morning routine is I take a little bit of sweet feed out for everybody. And this morning the new girls got theirs and they were thrilled to death. But nobody ever gets very much because I, I have a lot of very chubby sheep and they don't need lots of extra sweet feed. Okay, I love how this episode is about <laughs> these two new sheep and they have since disappeared. They are back up in the pasture. What do you think? You guys going to go visit? You going to go see the newbies? Yeah, the new sheepies. Okay, so anyway, there was fighting. The minute that I got everybody, everybody's done with their sweet feed, let everybody out. Oh, there was so much fighting. Um, I got them all. God, my little mountain sheep. My little tough Icelandics up there. Look at you. Uh, got them all down into, let me show you the side pasture. It's my, my favorite of the pastures because it's, it stays green, like, through the fall. Really? You have to go through the fake fence? Okay. Oh my goodness sakes. This pasture here is wonderful because it is, oh, there they are. Uh, it's down in this hollow, and so lots of moisture gathers, and it stays green for a long time. So, I had everybody locked up. Yes, there's Arwen. No, I'm sorry. There's Galadriel. See, I'm already doing it. And there's Arwen. Hello. Uh, Galadriel is the sweeter of the two, for sure. She's much shyer, and she does not... I should say much more shy... She doesn't want to fight. She really doesn't. But Arwen wanted to fight everybody. Cupcake! What are you doing? Get out of Daddy's tree! Oh my gosh, you naughty sheep. Okay. The cool thing about the fighting, though... Sorry, this is terrible camera work, I know. The cool thing about the fighting is that every time... Arwen would start picking on somebody, Daisy would just step right in and just start smacking Arwen. Like, no, that's not how we act around here. <laughs> it was so funny. I was telling uh, Josh, is my, I call him my farm hand. He's not really a farm hand, but he's done all sorts of great work for us this year. I was telling him that there's like no way to predict how the new sheep are going to behave with the old sheep. It's like every single time that we've introduced one or two or three new sheep, it's all different. So <laughs> I think that's what stresses me out the most is that I can't predict what's going to happen. I never would have thought in a million years that Daisy would have been the defender. Oh, I'm out of breath now. That hill is steep. Um, Panda Bear and Black Velvet, they acted just like I thought they would. They think that they're the leaders, and they should. They were here first. They're the older ladies. They know what's what. And they have seen so many new sheep come in. I think they're just about out of patience with it all. So, I expected them to be stinkers, okay? What I didn't expect was Daisy to defend... Everybody. She defended Panda Bear. She defended Black Velvet. When Galadriel and Arwen got on either side of Sam. Yes. On either side of Sam and were sniffing him and starting to push him around. Daisy got right there in between and just pushed him aside. Took care of Sam. So I was really tickled to see that. That was very, very cool. The only real, I wouldn't say catastrophe, but the thing that really upset me was that Arwen, at one point when she was fighting Black Velvet, and Daisy wasn't paying attention apparently, Arwen managed to knock uh, Black Velvet on her back. So there's my little, little woolly, chubby Icelandic, beautiful lady elegant sheep flailing about on her back, and I went running down the hill to rescue her, and she managed to ride herself, and she was fine. But it, it's just amazing how strong these little critters are, how goofy they are.
I'm looking at you, Cupcake. Yes. And just how different their personalities are from one another. <laughs> I, I've got to do a whole episode just about you being cute, don't I? Yes, I do. So, anyway. I think I've blethered on for ten minutes now. So let me actually tell you a little bit about these girls. This is Arwen. She, they don't know their ages for sure, but they're guessing that uh, both of them are probably about four years old. Arwen is the one scratching herself on the tree right now. She's the little fighty sheep, but she's starting to learn that she needs to knock it off, so that's a good thing. And she found Mikey's favorite scratching tree, so, uh, flies. So that's good. She's, she's learning the good spots of the farm. Um, she, they don't think she was ever bred before, and I would say that's probably a good thing because her tail is completely gone. There is no tail. Um, I did a blog post once about the tails and how important it is that they not be docked too short. And Daisy's is the shortest that I'd ever seen up until now. I mean, Daisy, at least if you, if you touch there, she wiggles a little something that's left, you know, at the base of her, her butt. Ar uh, Arwen has nothing there at all. So as I've been, you know, back and forth vacillating about breeding, possibly breeding, not breeding, I don't know what I want to do. I think I want to do it. But when I saw that on Arwen, I knew for sure that Arwen is not ever going to be bred. There's just no way. When, <clears throat> excuse me, when sheep's tails are docked too short, it's basically cutting off a little bit of their spinal cord. And that is a really important part of keeping like keeping their rectum inside, keeping their uterus inside. They can suffer from uterine prolapse where it just comes out during birth because there's not there's no muscles there to hold it in. So God, she is loving that tree. <laughs> yes, you are, you pretty girl. So anyway, Arwen will never be bred. Arwen will hopefully learn to get along with everybody and just grow old and have a happy life here. Okay, let's find... There's Galadriel. Galadriel has a bigger Suffolk face. Hi, sweetie. A little bit more standoffish, but she's got a perfect little tail. Look at that. And her butt. Look at that. It's a heart. She's got a heart on her butt. I know. I'm insane, but I saw that and just started cracking up. Black Velvet, they're not bothering you. <sighs> okay, so Galadriel was part of a breeding program where... I believe, if I'm understanding it correctly, they were experimenting as to whether uh, Suffolk, well, sheep, uh, farm sheep, could be bred to Rocky Mountain sheep, like the wild sheep. And Lee is, she, I th she said that she thinks that was done AI, you know, artificial insemination, which makes sense. I can't believe that they would have captured a Rocky Mountain ram and actually <laughs> bred him to her. So at some point we know she gave birth, uh, she was part of this, this program, and she was, you know, very well tended to. I, when I talk about research and programs at WSU, I don't want anybody to get the idea that they've been mistreated. Uh, Washington State University is, I, I just, I can't even say it enough times or well enough what an amazing place that is, particularly the, uh, you know, the small ruminants. The equine lab, every those the farm animals are the people that go to school there to learn how to be farm vets, and the professors there, the doctors there, they're just in a class. They're just in a cut above. I can't even, like I said, I don't have the words. So please don't ever think that what I'm saying is that they've been experimented on or mistreated in any way. They have not. Um, so that having been said. Uh, Gladriel was part of that program. She did give birth. Um, I don't know anything more about that, but we know that she birthed. She did fine. She didn't have any problems. And she's got that cute little tail. So if I were to try breeding anybody, it would be Galadriel. Um, cupcake is too... <laughs> she's too cupcake. She's just this still such a goofy little girl sheep even though she's enormous and um let's see daisy 
Daisy has given birth twice, but she's got that really short tail and I don't really want to risk it. And she's getting older. She's seven now and hasn't been bred for a couple of years. So I think she's, she's done. I don't want to put her through that. So as far as the big sheep, if I were to breed anybody, it would be Galadriel. Yes, that would be you, gorgeous. Yes. Um, as far as <laughs> Rohan, you can't fit under the deck anymore, sweetie. <laughs> I'm really sorry. Yeah, this time last year she was still squeezing under there on her little elbows and knees. Um, as far as the Icelandics or the Finns, I decided I didn't want to breed... Hello! I didn't want to breed Ruby, or I don't want to breed Ruby, because she would have to be separated from Garnet while she goes to Lee's farm to be bred. And Garnet would have a fit. He would miss his mommy so much. So I'm not going to do that to them. As far as the Icelandics, obviously Panda Bear and Black Velvet will never be bred. Um, there's Old Lady Spinster Sheep. Yes. Uh, Rosie and Rohan, on the other hand, it, it's, a, it's a maybe for the future. I'm not convinced that I won't ever do that, but the only ram available right now is their dad, Einar. And you're just beautiful. Yes, you are. And Lee is going to breed a couple of the daughters to Einar this year. There, It's been done. It doesn't seem to cause any problems. Um, but I don't know. I'm still enough of a non-farmer. Um, it just it kind of creeps me out. <laughs> uh, so... I'm sure there will be no problems, and Lee is not the type of person to ever risk her sheep on a, on a, oh, that maybe might work, that might be okay. She's done a lot of research, and yes, daughters can be bred to their fathers, but I don't think I want to do that. So, if Lee ends up getting another ram someday, I might think about breeding Rohan or Rosie to him. Um, but if not, they'll just be old lady spinsters too. Yes, and grow beautiful wool. So, <laughs> there's this. I don't know, this has been kind of a wonky vlog episode. I don't know that I'm ever going to have normal vlog episodes. Um... I get distracted by the sheep out here, and I want to make sure you guys are getting to see the sheep and hear the sheep and all that good stuff. And heaven knows if I keep adding sheep, then I keep having to do these introduction videos. So, I don't know. I'll get on track one of these days. It could happen. Um, an update on Sam before I close out. He is doing so well. Oh my gosh, he is... <sighs> I don't know that he's actually trimmed down, like lost any weight, but he has regained so much of his mobility. He still has kind of a funky little gait. Um, I imagine, if I, had, if I had to guess, I would guess that over time as he ages, he may end up with some arthritis in his legs, just because there has likely been some joint damage from him being so heavy. But... Just in the short time he's been here, he has... <laughs> Hello, sweet boy. He's just gotten um, stronger, I think, and loosened up those legs. It's like, it's like with people, when they have arthritis, the worst thing you can do if you have arthritis is to stop moving because those joints just get more and more damaged. So he's doing really well. <laughs> And he is just a delight. He is such a sweet member of the flock. I'm thrilled that we have him. And bless you, Rosie. Everybody else is doing great. Um, just while I've been filming, you know, we came up that big hill. There hasn't been any fighting. So I'm not saying there won't be any more. Um, Black Velvet was down there just eyeballing the two new girls. But it looks like it'll work out. And Lee has assured me in the 40 
42, 43 years that she's been raising sheep. She's never introduced new members of a flock and had something just horrific happen, like sheep kill another sheep or anything like that. It's like, it takes some pummeling and it's hard to watch if you're tender hearted, but, and it's hard to watch even if you're not tender hearted. It's like, God, you guys knock it off. Um, but it takes some pummeling and then they work it out. They figure out what the pecking order is. And I think that's happening already. So that, that's good. Thank you for listening to me blether about this and talk about this while I worried about my sheep and kind of keep an eye on them and see how they're doing today. Oh my goodness sakes. Part of me wants to just keep filming because I know somebody's going to do something cute here pretty soon, but I also don't want these vlog episodes to go really long. So I might just end here with a little shot of Cupcake and her mama Daisy. Imagine everybody's going to be wanting to lay down and chew their cuds pretty soon, so it's probably a good time to stop. I hope wherever you are that your weather is nice. I hope you're getting a break from extreme temperatures or extreme rain or whatever it is you're having where you're at. I hope all is well with you and your families. I appreciate you watching these crazy episodes and getting to know my sheep. And if you ever have any questions, post in the comments. You can do that on YouTube. Um, ask me questions and I can't guarantee I'll answer them right away, but I will answer them. You can also uh, check out Blaine Fleece and Fiber on Ravelry. We have a Ravelry group and I think it's a pretty fun group. Right now we're in the middle of Tour de Fleece, so everybody is spinning their little hearts out. And, you know, if you're a spinner and you didn't sign up for a team, you are welcome to join Blaine Fleece and Fibers up until the end of the tour. Uh, we have prizes. We have, like, participation prizes. Everybody who participates and posts on the last, you know, your last uh, end of tour spins. If you post both in the Blaine Fleece and Fiber group and the Tour de Fleece group on Ravelry, everybody, if you do that, you get a prize. So it's, it's kind of a cool thing. And I have a lot of fun with that every year. Uh, let's see, Instagram. Um, I'm on Instagram as Blaine Fleece and Fiber. I'm on Facebook if you look up Blaine Fleece and Fiber. Hey, Sam. They're down here, honey. Oh, Sam gets upset when he can't see the other sheep. Come on, bud. They're down here. So you can find Blaise, Blaine Fleece and Fiber all over the place. And I would love it if you checked out the website, which is, you guessed it, BlaineFleeceandFiber.com. That is where I have a Meet the Flock page, which needs to be updated desperately now. I've got my storefront there, so you can order products. We've got lots of roving in stock. Um, let's see, what else is on there? We've got some, I've got a new testimonials page, so if you're wondering, hmm, what is this Blaine Fleece and Fiber? What is their fiber like? Do people actually like it? Check out the testimonials page. I have been really, really pleased and very grateful to everybody who has submitted a review, a testimonial for me to put on that page. So check out all those places if you're on the various social media sites. And give me a shout if you have any questions about the sheep or farm life or whatever. And I really think this is probably the last time I'm going to add new f uh, flock members for quite a while. Uh, which means that the next vlog episode, I will start highlighting one individual sheep at a time. So you can kind of get to know each one. All right. Thank you so much for watching and listening. And take care and have a good summer. Bye.